Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another software architecture in Go video. In today's episode, I'm sharing with you the externalized configuration pattern. When we're building applications, one of those things that we need to define is configuration. One of the most common examples will be defining database configuration. We have a username, password, and hostname that depends and really changes depending on the environment. Maybe we have one for production, maybe we have one for development, and one for QA. In the context of this video, I will show you different ways to define configuration options that we can use as an input for our application and, more importantly, how we can use the externalized configuration pattern with an example in Go. So let me show you the code. As usual, the link to the code is in the description of this video, so please feel free to check that out. I will show you three different ways to define configuration options. They may be, you know, harder or more easier to implement, but I will show you the way to do it using an externalized configuration in the end. So first of all, we'll be using uh, parameters or flags. And in this case, we have a main.go file that uses the flag package to pass in some values, and then we can parse and use them as the option that we're, we're trying to use. In this case, will be password. This is a super really example, super simple example. I want you to think in the context, hey, our application is going to receive, is going to be receiving some values using flags or parameters. Now, how does this work in real life? If we go and build this application, you will notice that we have a, a file called parameter that by default, if you notice, is using the value that we define right here. Now, what is the most interesting thing about this example is that if we go ahead and define a password and we say ABC, one, two, three, four. Now, all of these values that we define right here, you will see that there are plain text. So if for whatever reason, uh, there is some login that happens to be uh, applicable to the machine that this application is running now this inform information will be available for somebody to see this is a security concern this is one way to do it let me show you another way the second example consists of using a properties file or a configuration file things that i think are really common nowadays that where you're defining is basically a way to embed the configuration into your binary or next to your binary in the context of go i'm actually using the go uh, embed configuration the property so we can actually embed it in the binary itself now the way it works as you may imagine is that it's going to be reading that configuration from those files to pull the values from those embedded files so this is something that is typically used in, in languages and frameworks that happen to be using java or maybe Ruby with Ruby and Rails or Python. But in Go, it's, again, it's another way to do it. If we look at the code, you will notice that I'm opening the configuration from the embedded file and then pulling the values from the embedded file. So the way it works, if we go and build that binary, you will see that now I can pass in. By default, it will fall back to the dev configuration that we defined before the dev environment that we used before in the previous example but if we want to specify some value we will need to pass in an argument that defines the, the environment itself so if we go back to the example and do env prod you will see that it's putting the value from in this case will be prod for production and in the other case will be dev for for dev if we go back and see the examples you will see that uh, those are the values that were saved in the configuration before so prod is using prod one two three dev is using dev one two three the last example i have consists of using the recommended way for building 12 factor applications i'm going to leave the link to that specific way of building applications in the description below which honestly this is the way i recommend using configuration values for production applications that happen to be using cloud native environments so the way it works is really simple let me show you so we have this environment uh, variable that is coming from your local uh, fork uh, program uh, that applies to your environment in this case it's called password and what it's going to be doing is literally pulling the value from the environment variable and print that out 
is really that simple so if we go and run this you will see that let me build it first you will see that hey three bars there is no password but if i do something like password one two three four you will see that the value is being printed out right here so these are three ways to common ways to define uh, inputs as configuration options into our applications we saw parameters or flags we saw files or embedded properties and three we saw configuration options using environment variables let me show you how you can do something similar using an externalized configuration service next example consists of using a service called uh, vault from hashicorp there are other ways to do this for example aws is ssm and azure also has their own storage uh, way to define the secrets so just want, I want to tell you something, this is not about using HashiCorp or AWS, SSM or Azure's, the, the one from Azure, but rather a way to define a, way, a, a data store, a secure data store that, is, that is, is, contains all the configuration in a way that is secure for your applications. So you don't have to literally use in plain text when you are configuring those when you are trying to run them. Okay, I want to show you the code just for context, but literally this doesn't matter too much so this is an example that i used previously in another of our videos i will be leaving the link in the description as well so you can review that but basically consists of connecting to the data store passing in some arguments indicating the key that we need which is encrypted by that service and then using it in our own application so there's nothing really extraordinary we connect to the client we get a value and we do something with it so if we build this one you will notice that uh, the value is coming from hashicorp the instructions are in the description of the readme so you can review that as well what is missing right here is that i'm missing a value that is coming from this uh, configuration that allows us to connect to the hashicorp vault server in this case it will be this value right here that i have is an environment variable called vault token that typically is injected when you're running your application with your container con containers uh, containerization service so if you're using ecs typically or kubernetes or whatever com containerization service that you're using it will be injecting that configuration together with the configuration that you're using for on your server so it's not like we're going to be passing in a plain blank vault token value i want to make that clear in this example, because we are running it locally, we need to pass in that vault token value. So if you saw before, you saw you notice that uh, it's connecting. It's not connecting because we have a permission error. So what we have to do is do a vault token my root, which is a way is the value that I use when I instantiated the Docker uh, container. So if you run this again, you will see that now it's actually getting the value that we are expecting. Let me show you the last example, and I think this is the most important one that combines all the four things that we saw before. This final example includes the previous four in a way that I think it makes the most sense in the case when we are trying to use the externalized configuration pattern. I'm going to be leaving also a link to a blog post that I wrote a few years ago that defines a clean way to indicate environment variables that happen to be using parameters. In the example, it's using AWS SSM, but it, it applies to any secure data store, so it, it should be the same. Now, the important bit is that we are going to be defining, when we are building an application, we're going to be defining a configuration layer. And the way I'm representing that layer is by building a type, in this case, called config. And this config, in this example, is part of the main package. But typically, this will be a package that is outside of main that can be reused by different binaries that are part of your application. Let me show you the actual implementation of that config file. If you remember the way we show we implemented uh, previously in the in the in the in the example that I show you, is literally you're receiving a token, receiving an address, and the token is coming from the vault token environment variable, and the address is the HTTP uh, URL that you're going to be using for connecting to vault. So this basically is kind of um, extracting out everything that we need for pulling values that we need 
from our secure data store. It's a really simple example, but I think it's important because we have a new config right here. And if you see, we have a function that is called get that returns the information that we need, which in this case will be the string and the error. And it does everything that we are supposed to be doing with the uh, details that we need for this application to run. As usual, all of this is in the links uh, below. So please review the code, everything. I think the important bit about this is that you have a secure data store that you can use for um, storing all of your information uh, in a way that is tokenized and not you're not leaking uh, values that could be potentially being a risk for your company, for your application and whatnot. So let's jump into the conclusions. I will talk to you in a few. So that's it. This is the externalized configuration pattern with a few examples in Go. Remember, the whole point of this is to define a secure data store that all your applications can access. That secure data store is obviously secure, but in a way it's storing all the credentials, all the uh, tokenized values that you need, and it's, you are not leaking that information when you're, when you're running your application, either via parameters or environment variables or whatever the case may be. Hopefully this is useful for you. I will talk to you next time. Until then, take care and stay safe. See ya.